We'll be getting started in just one minute. We have people joining here in the Zoom app on Pathable itself and also through the Facebook Live in multiple different places. So welcome to everyone and also to everyone who I know will be watching the recording. We have got a really exciting wrap up here for you. Firstly, I'm gonna go through a few highlights of the week just to tell you a bit about some of the exciting um, things that have happened. It's been a really, really eventful week. And then uh, we will be going through several different artists from around the world who will be sharing um, music and art from their island. And they're quite a diverse group. So I hope that'll be interesting for all of you. But to start with, I just want to thank all of the participants who have been here um, at this event for to, to, to be able to take part. Um, I can officially say that yesterday we hit 10,000 people from around the world register for this event, representing what I think is, we actually lost count, but at least over 500 islands, 170 plus speakers, and over 30 sessions. So I know that obviously we, we have had people spread out across the week. A lot of people have been watching the recordings because um, for many people, for example, um, it has been the middle of the night when they've needed to, when, they, when they've been wanting to participate. Um, we just came from a session talking about virtual events and what is the future of them. And this virtual island summit started last year, about this time last year, which feels so long ago, um, to really um, with this idea that by being a virtual event, we could connect islands from around the world together using technology. And yesterday we had um, Angus McNeil MP from the Western Isles of uh, Scotland talking, and he made the point that what this allows us to do is island to island interactions. Previously, people would have to go um, from uh, wherever their island is to a big center, New York, Edinburgh, London, um, to have these kind of interactions. But what we've been able to do is open this up to new people who maybe would not normally be able to join and try and make what I hope has been a more inclusive event to involve more people. So we've seen talks from the Caribbean, from the Arctic, from Scotland and the European islands, Africa, Latin America, particularly Patagonia, um, Asia, Australasia, the Pacific, um, and I'm sure I missed somewhere as well. It's been a really, really global event, and I'm excited, hopefully, to see you all coming back next year for the next Virtual Island Summit. Um, we, I must say a special thanks to all of our sponsors who have supported this event. It's really important to us to keep this as a free event, uh, but obviously there are costs for putting it together, and so we have had those costs sponsored, um, particularly to our gold uh, sponsors, which include La Clanche SA, uh, Pathable, Buzzmaker, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, and to our many other sponsors as well, um, who have run specific different sessions uh, throughout the week. Also, would like to thank our ambassadors. Our ambassadors are, are, have been an absolutely, this was a new program we started this year. We've had over 150 ambassadors from islands around the world, which has been run by um, our team um, here to, and particularly Isabel Godoy, who's put a lot of work into organizing and running our ambassador program. Uh, I can't name all of our ambassadors one by one, but just a really big thank you to all of you who've supported this event, have made sure that your islands have been represented and got involved and have um, been, uh, been, been really helping to share, uh, share your islands' um, issues, needs, and strengths and opportunities. Um, our team here have been absolutely fantastic. So all of the Island Innovation um, team, really, really big thank you to, your, to, to you all um, for everything that you have, um, that you've been doing. 
um, particularly uh, Sarah Forster, who has done a lot of, of amazing uh, following up on the agenda. Um, Taylor Mills, who's really helped with all of the, the marketing and uh, organization. Christian Zacchino, Isabel Godoy, Michael Dorgan, Sebu Baba, uh, Sasha Edwards, Shanique Parkinson, uh, Tracy Laughlin, uh, Vincent Deringer, and um, I hope that's everyone. I think I covered everyone there. So thank you to all of you. We also have a survey. I uh, would really appreciate any of you filling in our survey. So if you check, um, if you check in the chat, hopefully Sarah can go ahead and post that now um, for all participants. If you could go ahead and fill in our uh, survey, your feedback is really, really valued and we would appreciate anything that you can do um, to all that you can offer in terms of your experience that can help us make this event even better for the future. Um, all sessions have been recorded and will be available post event. And I know they're going to get a lot of people watching them after this event. So we will make sure that those are available to all of you. And finally, thank you to the authors who donated their books to our island giveaway, um, which uh, you will all have seen after you registered. We'll be announcing those winners next week and the, the 10 or 12 books will be mailed wherever you are in the world to those winners. So I think that covers uh, the main points I wanted to. Uh, thanks again, everyone in the chat uh, for your comments and all your kind words. Kind words are awesome, but feedback is also really appreciated. So if you can offer us constructive feedback in that form, it's really appreciated. So without further ado, I would like to invite our first artist to come onto the screen, um, Didi Patry is a singer-songwriter from Madeira Island, um, a Portuguese island off the west coast of North Africa, um, based in Portugal. And in 2019-2020, um, Didi was, um, in 2020, you'll find Didi backing up his self-titled EP and debut album, Twists and Turns, with a set of typically well-crafted new singles. And uh, Didi and your team there. Welcome. Thank you. I'd invite Thank you, you to much, say, a, say a few words and then um, go straight into it. Thanks again to you and to our other artists for being a part of this. Hi. Um, thank you very much, James. And hello, everybody. Um, um, I have brought some reinforcements uh, for this very special occasion, which we are very grateful for, uh, very gracious of, of, of Pedro, who is our local representative on Madeira Island, um, to, to, to extend this invitation to me. I'm very touched to be here with so many people from around the world. It's very exciting and uh, it's very beautiful as well. Um, I have with me two uh, long-term friends, uh, fellow islanders, um, this is Mr. Cristiano Luis, who's a photographer and also a musician, and Jerome Faria, who is a composer. And um, together we're going to perform an arrangement of a song of mine uh, released last year called West Coast. Um, and as the name indicates, uh, it's a song about the West Coast, in this case of Madeira Island, where I lived for a period. Um, and it's, uh, it's kind of an exploration of that theme. For those of you who don't know uh, the island, it's very beautiful, uh, very rugged uh, nature. And on the west coast, I felt uh, very at home on the, the pebble beaches and the, the basalt uh, cliffs, uh, sea cliffs. And um, that was kind of the inspiration for this arrangement. So, muito obrigado a todos. E, um, e é com muito gosto que vamos apresentar West Coast para todos vocês no arranjo de nós os três. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was absolutely beautiful. What a wonderful rendition. And uh, I know people are at home applauding <laughs> uh, themselves. Um, so, so it's great. Yeah, thank you for that. And uh, we were very happy to have Madeira so well represented this, this year. Um, so to all of you, thank you. And we will now move slightly further north. Uh, goodbye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> we'll now move slightly further north to the Republic of Ireland. Um, Dr. Liz Doherty. Liz, if you're, if you're there and would like to come on. Wonderful. I can see you. And um, we appreciate you also being a part of this. I can see you're joined. <laughs> joined by uh, supporters. That's excellent. Um, Liz is a fiddle player, teacher, and arts consultant from County Donegal, and is a very talented individual. I have a long list of credentials. I won't go into all of them, um, but just to say she's a very, very talented individual. But one I particularly wanted to highlight was your PhD on the fiddle music of Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. And so Liz, for those, for those maybe less familiar with um, Celtic fiddle traditions, and also the link to Cape Breton Island would be wonderful if you could maybe just talk a little bit about um, your own uh, experience of, of fiddling, what that means in Ireland and the connection with Cape Breton. And thanks again for being a part of this. Uh, we're having a sound issue, Liz. Don't think we can hear you.
Nope, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you, Liz. No, I'm not sure what's happened there, unfortunately. I hope it's not just on my side. anyone okay um maybe we can come back to you no nothing i don't think anyone in the chat it's not just me right <laughs> um anyone in the chat can just let me know no we can't can't hear you liz um shall we try and come back to you after the next uh after the next speaker, uh, we'll 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 skip and then come back to you close to the end if that's if that's okay. And hopefully we can get it sorted. But uh, we can see you at least and all your supporters. So all right, thank you, thanks again. And hopefully we'll come back to you again. Um, so we'll move then on to Jimania Didier. Jimania, if you'd like to come up onto the screen, if you're there. Jimini, are you are you there? Okay. In that case, what I'm going to do is <laughs> go to a video that's been submitted by one of our performers who is from Hong Kong, uh, and so it would have been the middle of the night, and so we they submitted a video, slightly different uh, direction that we're going in here um, than other performances, but we have a, a real range for you today. So Mouse, Mouse FX is a reggae singer from Hong Kong who has got a um, interesting link after spending a lot of time in the Caribbean and particularly in Jamaica. He's the only singer songwriter who writes in Cantonese, Cantonese lyrics in reggae music from a beautiful small island which is part of Hong Kong. Um, he earlier this month released a new album, Mouse Effects in Jamaica, in which he combines the essence of truth, humanity, and love of the world into reggae music through his mother tongue of Cantonese. And this album was recorded last year in Jamaica at the Leslie Kong studio, an influential Chinese Jamaican reggae producer whose studio has given birth to the significantly important label Island Records which produces consistent nucleus of Jamaican musicians, including the likes of Bob Marley, who then unites all the, um, who, who, who unites this. Um, for those of you less aware, um, there is a traditional, oh, Germania, I can see you now, but we're going to go to the video and then we'll come back to you. Uh, so we'll come back in a second. Um, for those of you not aware, there is a significant um, influence of um, Chinese culture in reggae music, um, as well as obviously the many other cultures that influence the Caribbean, in particularly um, the culture of Afro descendants that live there. So this is a small insight into the Chinese links today in Jamaica. Fire, 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 Judgment 
judgment day、哎。全世界正要踏进这更年期，如你未放弃嘅，你该当早预备。就算食飞天遁地，无可逃离。哦,哦，生。散发出这火药味，国与国之间太多火药味。我曾留有余地 ，Judge Monday， 火药味，大自然散发出这火药味，火药味。我曾留有余地 ，Judge Monday， 全世界正要踏进这更年期。放弃嘅你就要早预备，就算食飞天遁地，无法逃离魔爱。全世界正要踏进这艰难时期，如你未放弃嘅你该当早预备，就算食飞天遁地，如何定义魔爱？生与死。逃避。唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱唱我曾留有余地。Judgment Day， Judgment Day， Judgment Day， Judgment Day。Fire， fire， 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 oh burning。Fire， fire， fire， oh fire， oh burning。Ever be there? Fire, 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 fire. Ever be there? Humanity, no more brutality. 'Cause I and my brother and sister from Africa, one love, one blood. See ya, love. Ding 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 ding. Why? Hey, hey. 终于找得到这真的意义，从一粒粒关于那个他的种子，一天一天散如海的堆石，无穷尽偏石头用火里面。切切，声音跟你连线，沉睡中一切将会走出水面，石碑中的所说将会一一兑现，重叠的一切，哦，原来还连同志，单一的一个生命，难道会一点不觉可惜？当天的所作加上岁月土概念，但愿事实，但愿往日走出水面，一刻钟都不去你偷换概念。Skonka Records. Greetings, this is Mouse Fix from Hong Kong. Link up with Skonka Records in Jamaica. Whoa. 
Another version of for vinyl only of caught up them. We got Matt Trev for the mix. Thousands of ways they may say. Ask me why the inquiries were fake. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. destiny has been sold out in many ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, let me have to sacrifice. No, please, let me have to sacrifice. Please, let me have to sacrifice. But no one asked them why. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Please, then we have to sacrifice. No, please, then we have to sacrifice. No, please, then we have to sacrifice. But no one asks them why. Why? 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 Conquer Records for production. They have Matt Trap. They have Jar Keys. They have Jar Servant. Mouse FX in Jamaica. Greetings, this is Mouse FX from Hong Kong. They have Conquer Records. Pick up. Island Innovation. See?
Thank you to MouseFX for that amazing performance and for submitting that video for us. And now we will go back to the Caribbean for Germania. Hopefully you're able to join us now on screen. There we go. And can we hear you okay? have to unmute. I think you're muted still. Let me. Oh, yeah. I there we go. We can hear you. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Jamini, I'm really excited to have you. We're, we have quite a range of, of, of uh, performances tonight. And so I'm glad um, we can go in this direction to learn some more about kind of the written arts and particularly from your incredibly beautiful island of Dominica. Actually, on our first day, I'm not sure if you're aware, we had a film um, from Dominica. Um, yes, called, I am uh, Civilized. Yeah, so we, we've had a, quite a great showing from your island. And um, I know that you have an interesting background, um, being a lecturer and a teacher and a big passion for creative writing. So would love to hand over to you if you'd like to tell us some more about your island and some context for your performance. And thank you for joining us tonight, Jibelia. You're welcome. Hi everyone, I'm Germania Didier and I hail from the Commonwealth of Dominica. Just to give you a background as to my little island. Dominica, better known as the nature island of the Caribbean, is situated in the Lesser Antilles in the Eastern Caribbean Sea. It lies between the French islands of Guadeloupe to the north and Martinique to the south. And Dominica has been a member of the Commonwealth since its independence in 1978. The chief, the, the capital and the chief port of Dominica is called Roseau. The population is mainly of African descent with some Europeans, people from the Indian subcontinent and the Kalinago Indians, descendants of the people who lived in Dominica before European colonization. We speak English, it's our official language, but we also speak a French patois called Creole, as well as a dialect called Kokoi. The original Kalinago language can be found in some of the names of villages and places in Dominica, such as Sineku and Berequa. So these are names of the, from the Kalinago language. Dominica is a natural paradise made up of towering mountains, valleys, rivers, lakes, and waterfalls. Volcanic by nature, it is home to the world's second largest boiling lake. And people come from all over the world to visit our boiling lake. For the nature lover, Dominica offers a wonderland of adventure with its fauna and flora. Our Cicero parrot, endemic to the island, bids you welcome. I'm going to share right now a short PowerPoint on Dominica. Okay, so I'm trusting everyone can see. Here we, we have the map. See that, can, we see, can we see the, the PowerPoint? No, we're not able to see it yet. Um, okay. I did send it as backup. I'm yeah, not sure I have it here if you want me to share it and you just tell me when to move to the next slide. Okay then. Okay, well, let me get back to, let me get back to the Zoom. Um, you should be able to see that now, Jamelia. Okay, so you'll share it, great. Okay, so you can click. All right, so welcome to Dominica. Official name, Commonwealth of Dominica, but known as Waitu Kubuli for the Kalinagos. So this is a picture of some of the Kalinago people who live in our island, and um, they call Dominica Waitu Kubuli, yes? You can click the map of Dominica, not very big. If you look, you'll see some um, of the names that have Bataka to the right, 
um, Salibia Sineku. This is the Carib territory where our indigenous people live. You can, we can click. Rosa, the capital, a view of it. You can see in the background, these mountains. Dominica is one of the most rugged islands in the Caribbean. Let's click. Our flag. Our flag can be seen from miles away. It is one of the few flags with an animal on it. And so we have our parrot called the Cicero parrot, right in the center, surrounded by 10 stars, which represents our 10 parishes. The cross represents our Christian, our, our adherence to Christianity. The yellow, sunshine, black, the African um, descent, and the majority of people have African descent. And the white, the clarity of our rivers. The green, the background of Dominica, Dominica called the nature island of the Caribbean is very green. We have greens of all shades. So our flag. We move to the next slide. Our coat of arms. It's represented um, on the bottom of our coat of arms. We have here, Apre Bodie Se La Terre. That's written in Creole. So I think Dominica's coat of arms, again, one of the very few to have the Creole language on it. So it's a distinctive um, coat of arms. We have our Cicero parrot and our Jaco parrot, two parrots endemic to our island. The banana tree. Okay, so the coat of arms of Dominic, I was going to just describe quickly. So the banana tree um, to, the, to the bottom right, the banana tree here represents our agriculture. We have the crapo on top, which we call the mountain chicken. Once upon a time, we used it as our national dish. dish. However, it has since gotten some kind of disease, and so we no longer use it as our national dish. Um, we also have the coconut tree, because coconuts, we use coconuts to do lots of things, not only for food, but to build them. Um, once upon a time, it built houses and so on, but it's a, a, a tree that we, which does a lot for us. And the boat here signifies the coming of the Europeans um, when they came to the islands. We were once under the British, and so this lion and the crown on the top represents the British rule. Okay, we can change. So the coat of arms of Dominica bears the inscription, Après Bordier C'est la Terre, after God the earth. And it emphasizes the importance of the soil in the island with its economy based on agriculture. Okay, next slide. A picture for national parrot, the Cicero parrot. Okay, we can go to the next slide. The pride of Dominica, Amazona imperialis, our Cicero parrot, the national bird. It is protected and it is probably among the oldest species of Amazon parrot in the world found only in Dominica. We move to the next slide. We also have a national flower called the Bois Carib. So in full bloom, it's a, a big tree. You can see the, how the flower looks in detail, the national flower. Next slide. Our people. Here you have ladies dressed in our national, um, our national dress, which is called a warb duet. During the month of October, it's really a time to visit Dominica we have a whole Creole festival. And so this is a parade where the ladies, um, students, there's the, the last Friday of October, which we call June Creole. And we dress in our national wear and there are parades in the streets. We eat Creole food. We try to speak in the Creole language. There's Creole music and it's really, really a wonderful time. 
So we have the children as well, all dressed up going to school. And another picture of our Kalinago indigenous peoples here. We move on to the next slide. Natural sites, our boiling lake, our number one touristic attraction. As we said, Dominica with, with its volcanic formation. So it's a big lake boiling in the crater there. That's the second largest in the world. I think the first one is found in New Zealand. So it's easier to come to Dominica to see a boiling lake than to go to New Zealand. And our Trafalgar Falls, Twin Falls, they were damaged a bit by the Hurricane Maria. So once upon a time, the bigger fall that you're seeing, there was a, a big pool where one could bathe, but now it's all filled with stones because of the hurricane. We can move on. And so we come to the end of our short PowerPoint presentation. A warm welcome awaits you when COVID is over. <laughs> okay, so right now I'm going to be doing my poem. I have been writing for, uh, for quite some time. I love creative writing. And during the lockdown here in Dominica, on the 22nd of March, um, we got uh, a few cases of COVID. And so our country was under curfew and lockdown. And so there was a lot of time to just do creative stuff. And I took the time to write poetry. Inspired by this COVID situation, I wrote a poem entitled World on Lockdown. And so I'd like to share it with you. Origin Wuhan, China, that COVID-19 thing, forcing people to stay home, it was no time for bling. To try to stop the virus, Ube province on lockdown, Personal freedom restricted, isolation all around. A Pandora's box was open. This was indeed a threat. Little did the world know it was about to sweat. Would you have imagined San Francisco a ghost town? No bars, no restos open, no nightlife to be found. Then there's New York, the Big Apple. Many businesses in doubt leaving employees to grapple or to find a way out. The leadership of Governor Cuomo was indeed put to the test. Controlling this pandemic had him under duress. The situation became morbid. Such a toll this virus took, leaving New Yorkers grieving. What a grim outlook. President Trump, upset with WHO, threatened withdrawing funds, citing incompetence and lack of vision of professionals on the ground. Who would have thought that Times Square would be a place of peace? No yellow, black, or white taxis, few pedestrians on the street. And what about Champs-Élysées? All cafes on shutdown. That famous busy avenue only joggers on the run. Trafalgar Square in London, just pigeons everywhere. No tourists to feed them, no taking selfies there. Let's talk about Italy, gondolas all on strike. The canals clear as crystal, playful dolphins in the night. What about St. Peter's Square? The faithful had no hope of listening to the Easter Mass delivered there by the Pope. Las Ramblas in Barcelona, an avenue fallen, no sight of human statues, no artists to be found. La Sagrada Familia, masterpiece of Gaudi, standing void of the faithful. How could this be? In Rio de Janeiro, Ipanema Beach lies still. No music bossa nova, no curvy tanned bodies, no thrill. This virus COVID-19 
set the whole world in a spin. With no vaccine to stop it, blossom into a whirlwind. In the peaceful Caribbean, it also popped its head. From Antigua to Trinidad, a few people lay dead. Thank God for Dominica. So far we are coping well. Let us hope this will continue a success story to tell. Lives in the thousands, lost throughout the world, loved ones gone too soon, sad stories to be told. Amazing how this virus traveling all around has mankind in a frenzy and our planet on lockdown. Thank you. Thank you so much, Germania, for sharing. Um, beautiful Dominica and that wonderful poetry. I have still not visited Dominica and I can't wait to, uh, to go. So different than many of your neighbors um, in, in yes. so many ways and such an interesting culture and landscape. So thank you so much again for joining us here tonight. It's a pleasure. And, and we're going to go back, hopefully, to Liz Doherty in Ireland who will join us. Liz, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear there, me? Yes, there we go. We can hear you now. <laughs> um, I, so I already did your, did your introduction, but as I said, if you could uh, say a little bit more about you and uh, fiddling in Ireland, and thank you again for being here with us. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me, and uh, apologies to everybody for the technical glitch earlier. I'm speaking to you this evening from County Donegal in Ireland, so we're right up in the northwest of Ireland, and uh, it's a beautiful evening. The sun is still shining. Uh, it's not raining, so anything that you've heard that is typical of Donegal and Ireland is all being put to shame tonight. Now, it's a gorgeous evening here. And um, it's wonderful to be here um, and invited to take part in this closing ceremony and fantastic that, that you guys have such an array of artists from around the world, from islands around the world, uh, to, to close out your fantastic event through the week. Um, and I'm really grateful to be here. I'm actually launching a new business tomorrow morning, so this is a, a very welcome uh, distraction and uh, very, very happy to be here to play a few tunes for you. James had asked um, about my background and my connection with Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. In Donegal, where I'm from, there's a, a really strong connection between the fiddle music um, of our island and that of Scotland. Um, and historically, a lot of men in particular would have taken the boat from the coast of Ireland and went to Scotland for several months of the years to work and would bring back tunes and songs and stories. And so there's a great sharing of cultures between Ireland, particularly Donegal and Scotland, um, to the extent that actually um, it was often said that, that Cape Breton or that Donegal was nearly closer to Scotland Scotland and to Scottish music than it was to Irish music. And it was then through my kind of exploration of Scottish music that I ventured towards Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. And on that small island, the heritage there comes from the highlands and islands of Scotland as well, from the 18th century, um, for when, when lots of communities were displaced and transplanted to the New World and as part of the Highland Clearances. And people moved across the ocean and settled in this new world, bringing their music and their stories and their language with them. And in Cape Breton, that music was preserved and held onto for generations. Um, it's a very, very strong fiddle tradition, fantastic people, fantastic place. Um, and it's very close to my heart and very, um, very familiar to us here in Donegal as well. So lucky to have all kinds of friends um, in Cape Breton, uh, some of whom I hope are, are here tonight as well. And of course, with fiddle music, uh, which our folk fiddle music traditions span the world, but we have a great North Atlantic arc of fiddle music that goes from Orkney through Shetland, um, through all of the highlands and islands of Scotland, through Ireland, um, and on, of course, to the, the east coast of America. Lots of unique identities and sounds and styles, but a very strong common thread that binds us all together. And so I'm going to play a few tunes for you here this evening. Um, I've actually, it's Sunday night and it's um, preschool. Everybody's back at school again. So I have the whole family here with me. So I'm going to rope them all into playing a few tunes for you. Um, we have Oren 
who's here on the tin whistle. Oren is, well, he reminded me he turned 11 during the week. Um, and we have Dallin, who's going to come and say hello as well. Dallin is eight, and he's also going to play the tin whistle. I'm going to play the fiddle. And then my husband, Jim, uh, who dealt with all the technical hitches there, uh, is also going to play the whistle and then the bar run, which is the Irish frame drum. So we're going to play you two tunes. The first one is a hornpipe, which is called uh, The Road to Malin. And Malin is the northerly point of Ireland. Malin Head is the most northerly point of our island here in Ireland. And we're going to follow that with a reel called The Pleasant Beggar. So I hope you enjoy these and time for a few dances if you're sitting at home and ready to um, have a, a little dance and party to yourself. We, we give it a lash here. Okay, Oren, take it away. Thank you. 
<laughs> thank you so thank you so much Liz that was beautiful and so great that you had your whole family involved there with you and uh, I've just copied some information into the chat for everyone um, maybe you just want to briefly tell us about your new business uh, just so everyone's aware of, of that yes yes um, so I've just recently um, pre-covid just pre-COVID, uh, left my job as an academic uh, to start a new venture, which is specifically for supporting teachers of traditional music. Um, often, um, if you're teaching traditional music, you're qualified by being a musician and you're kind of left to your own devices. It's very hard to find support and resources and just a community of people who are doing the job that you're doing. Uh, I felt really, really strongly about this because for me, it's all about sustaining the arts, sustaining the culture. It's all part of our identity and such an important important part of our whole lives going forward now in this uncertain times we face. So yeah, so my new venture is called I Teach Trad and it's about um, supporting the professional development of traditional music teachers the world over. So um, yeah, come visit and say hello on the website. Thanks Liz and everyone can find that link uh, in the chat below. And we'll be staying in the Celtic vein. Uh, just not too far, you maybe can uh, see each other's islands almost from Donegal uh, to the north in the Outer Hebrides, um, the Isle of Grimsay, where Patrick Morrison, I believe, is, is currently. Are you currently in, um, in Grimsay, Patrick? Sadly, I have to admit, I'm at this very moment not in Grimsay, but uh, I'm okay. never too far away. <laughs> well, you're a, a Grimsay lad. Uh, we'll be able to, uh, I know you've done a lot of work there and you have a long... Uh, history there but you'll have many different hats if you google patrick and and do a little bit of research about his his work you'll find a lot of information about the various things he's involved in but particularly as an advocate for the gallic language and cultural re revitalization um and also are, are you you're currently doing your phd patrick yeah that's right currently doing a phd in music composition yeah okay yeah, I think you, you and Liz have a, have a lot in common, clearly, uh, with, your, uh, with your interests. Um, so we'll hand over to you now, Patrick. For those that don't know, the Outer Hebrides is really the, the stronghold, of, stronghold of the Gaelic language. And uh, I think it's fantastic that Patrick is such an advocate for that. So over to you to tell us more about, uh, about you, your work. And thanks for being here, Patrick. No, well, thanks a million. Thanks for having me. Um, and that was great to hear Liz playing some, some music. And uh, those of you following um, will, will see the similarities in uh, the music that I'm playing as well. Um, not too far away. I, I don't think we can see each other um, across the water, but it certainly wouldn't be too far um, if you went by boat, um, as opposed to all the usual means of public transport that we have to take. Um, so it's great to be with you um, this evening and um, I've not managed to get along too much over the course of the week but it's um, been amazing just looking through some of what you were, were covering and discussing um, and uh, it's brilliant to have this, this kind of discussion uh, ongoing and um, yeah just as uh, James you mentioned there I'm quite involved in a um, number of things but certainly uh, with music and, and wider through uh, involved in kind of cultural Gaelic revitalization. Um, and um, yeah, something I think about quite a lot is the, the kind of importance of um, culture uh, in enabling us to reinvigorate our communities, um, be it linguistic communities, be it our island communities. Uh, our rural communities um, and our, our young people communities as well, particularly important in these island communities. Um, so I, I've um, been thinking a lot about trying to get, ensure that the young folk get back to our islands uh, in the Outer Hebrides and um, something I feel strongly about is the role that music can play in this. Um, and you know, music brings folk together, but it, it also stays with us um, wherever we are all through our lives. and. Um, the, the kind of importance, I think, of uh, establishing um, and nurturing a sense of cultural identity. And that's something that I think for islands is particularly pertinent. Um, that community on an island um, of uh, interdependency and being together as a strong community um, is often shown historically and today um, through, through cultural activity, through the arts, through music. Um, 
And at the moment, something that we're really trying to do in our islands is try and make sure that young folk come back and also make sure that young folk stay engaged with Gaelic language. Um, and so uh, there's a vibrant music scene at the moment in Gaelic and the culture has really seen a resurgence over the last 50 years. And, um, and now I believe that that cultural resurgence is having an impact on those that are speaking the language and also those that are choosing to live in these island communities, the kind of strength of that cultural identity um, as part of who they are through the arts, as part of who they are, can then really drive them emotionally to want to be in the community of that culture. Um, so I hope that um, gets everyone thinking a lot about the importance and the power of the, the arts um, to our islands and to, to our, our, our indigenous languages. And, um, and to our fragile communities. Um, so um, to connect to that, I'll, I'll play a set of tunes. I'll start with, um, I think probably the, one of the oldest tunes I know, and this is a tune that I learned um, from, from the singing of my father and grandfather, uh, and my grandfather got it from his mother, and she got it from her mother on a small island that's no longer lived on now, um, off Grimsey in the Outer Hebrides. And um, so that takes it back a few centuries. And then I'll go into um, a few tunes that I've written. So bringing us up right up to date to the, to the very modern, um, kind of in the traditional style, but some new tunes. So here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ken Gord, Path Felicia. Um, thanks very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the excellent selection this evening. Path Felicia, Patrick, and really uh, fantastic to have that performance and, and to hear a bit about what um, you're doing uh, in the Gaelic revival. And um, we've been happy to have a good representation at this event from people from um, across the, the Western Western Isles and, and, and the Inner Hebrides also of, of Scotland. Um, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, we'll, we'll move on to our next and final artist now. Again, back across the Atlantic to the Caribbean. And I'll invite Boo Hinkson to join us on stage, as it were. Boo, if you're, if you're there and could come uh, come on board. Um, Boo's talent transcend, transcends culture and sound, and he brings a fresh and innovative blend of jazz and Caribbean music. He is a gifted composer, producer, and guitarist with a unique approach and a distinctive sound. Joining from not far, we've already had Dominica, and Boo is not so far away in the neighboring island of St. Lucia that shares many of the same cultural traditions as Dominica. And Boo, I'd love it if you're able to uh, share a little bit, uh, a bit more about the influence for your, um, for your music and uh, St. Lucian culture. And thank you again for uh, joining us this well, thanks for having me. today. Excuse me. Um, my musical background started as a very young kid on this island. My, my dad, during the Second World War, there was a contingent of the British Army in the islands called the West Indian Regiment. And my dad happened to be in the army band. So my dad played the clarinet and my mother played the guitar. So I didn't find music, music found me. And because of this interaction with my dad, um, he brought home all the Duke Ellington and the Count Basie and Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. So I grew up as a kid on this little island listening to that kind of stuff. And there was, as a kid, I used to listen to, we used to have a little shortwave radio and I listened to Voice of America. And there used to be a jazz program. And I distinctly remember the theme of the program being Take the A Train. So on this little island, I grew up listening to Calypso and everything else that was from the Caribbean and, and um, with a heavy jazz influence. So when it came to fusing Caribbean music with jazz, it became second nature for me, you know. Um, so I ran a band, well, we did it mainly top 40, but we always infused some jazz into it. And I think um, there was a point where the Caribbean music began to, to change with less musical content. And um, I wasn't feeling very satisfied musically doing that kind of stuff. So um, I went solo and I did more straight ahead than anything else. And then I switched again and, and then started to do more contemporary jazz. And I'm currently signed to Zeppelin Records out of Washington, DC. Um, I was recently number one in the Radio Guitar One Smooth Jazz Charts with a song called African Queen. Um, and what else have I done? I've done a lot of stuff. I've, I've, I did Super Bowl art, I'm sure. I did, I did the White House. I've done Boston, Washington, Philly, New Orleans, LA. I've done quite a few things. Um, but um, to talk about my country, I come from this little island in Lucia, 238 square miles, 170,000 people. We're very similar. It's very similar culturally to Dominica. Um, our mainstay of our economy is tourism. So you would imagine that COVID has played a number on us. We, fortunately, we've only had just about 26 or 27 cases. And we've, we've just had, we only have one active case now, and that's a visitor. We've had no community spread and we've had no deaths. But so we've done, we are among the top eight countries in the world to have handled um, the coronavirus with any measure of success. So we've done extremely well and I'm very proud of my country for this, you know. Um, but to go back to my music, I, I do compose a, a wide array of music and this song is something called La Luna Latina. And because I travel extensively, 
I tried to have some things in my in my library that would help me to connect with whatever audience I'm getting to. And, and this song is something I did from one of my tours of South America, and it's called La Luna Latina. <laughs> So the other thing I was telling you about St. Lucia, um, in terms of our per capita, we have the most Nobel laureates in the world. We have three Nobel laureates out of 175,000 people. Um, one is Derek Walcott, and I'm from this, one for economics and one for literature. And um, for a small country like this, we pack a big punch. So if anybody look, is looking for the ideal place for a holiday, San Lucia is what you should look to. You know, some people say they've never been to heaven, but they've been to San Lucia. <laughs> I think that's a great punchline to promote San Lucia. Okay, this next song is something called Happiest Man Alive. This is, we have um, our, one of the, the most popular forms of music here is what we call soca. And um, I normally take these tunes and redo them and kind of fuse them with some jazz and, and so there's improvisation and so on. 
but I try to still keep it as commercial as possible. But this is happiest my life. Boo, thank you so much for those two pieces. Um, that was a real treat and what a way to end this event. Um, we've had hours and hours of content this week and I think the Caribbean influence of, of all the different cultures that make up the Caribbean uh, was something that you really, really showed there. And I love the love love how you how you brought all those together. So thank you so much for joining us from St. Lucia tonight. And uh, I'm not sure, you probably haven't seen the chat, but we have quite a few St. Lucians who've been commenting and people from neighboring islands also have been commenting in the chat and saying how glad they are to see you. So thank you very much um, for, for joining us. Okay. And that has brought us to the end of what has been a long but exciting week. Um, one final reminder that if you haven't yet, please do fill out the uh, the uh, feedback form. We would really appreciate that. And I want to say a really big thank you 
to Didi Patry from Madeira, Dr. Liz Doherty from Ireland, from Donegal in Ireland, Jaminia Didier from Dominica, Patrick Morrison from Grimsey in the Outer Hebrides, Mouse FX from Hong Kong, and finally, Ronald Boo Hinkson from St. Lucia. What a note to end on. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and we're so glad we were able to do in art what we've been hoping to do all week with other topics, bring together many, many different islands from many, many different places for this. And hitting 10,000 registrants really uh, made it uh, really made, made it uh, something. I didn't tell you that. Um, we've had features in news articles from around the world in Australian radio, New Zealand. Um, unfortunately, the Pacific wasn't represented in this session, um, but we would love to do more to represent the Pacific Islands in, in these sessions as well. Um, on TV stations on islands around the world and radio and local newspapers, and we've managed to involve some more islands this year that have not uh, that were not represented last year. And so I'm hoping that we can use this network to go from strength to strength, support everything that's happening on your islands, and really just create a source of information to share um, island to island uh, information. Maybe that's the hashtag we should be using: island to island. Um, so with that, we're not quite finished. In about well, in exactly 30 minutes, we'll be having our final Network Plus session. Um, for those of you who haven't joined, this was the only paid part of the summit, but we've decided to make this final session free to attend um, for all of you here at our closing session. So if you'd like to join the Network Plus, it's on a platform called Remo which is very, very different to Zoom. It's much more interactive. It allows you to jump from table to table, talk to people, meet people face to face, and get some of that conference interaction that maybe you have not been able to get completely being virtual. Um, we do recommend if you're joining that, that you use a laptop or computer, not an iPad or a phone, and that you use Google Chrome browser if possible. Um, and we'll be there if you have any technical difficulties, just shoot us an email, but you should hopefully see that link in the agenda, um, and hopefully someone's also dropping it in the chat now. So I we'll, uh, would like to invite anyone at the closing session to join us in 30 minutes for that final network session, and feel free to bring a drink with you um, and join from wherever you are in the world. So with that i'll say we will be in touch with all of the recordings from this week um, and further opportunities if you've attended this summit you'll also receive our occasional island innovation newsletter which features um, stories from islands all over the world and important news articles and again helps us to fulfill our goal of sharing information from very very diverse islands so thank you all for all of your support this week for taking part thanks to the attendees the island innovation team uh, the sponsors, all the performers tonight, all of our speakers throughout the week, and all of the partners this week that have made this something. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is. Thank you. Bye-bye.